Join us on an enlightening expedition as we explored the intriguing life of a remarkable figure who made a lasting impact figure who made a lasting impact on English history, Anne Boleyn. As we unravel her captivating tale, we venture into the world of an exceptional woman, eternally remembered as King Henry VIII's second wife, whose life intricacies continue to audiences centuries later. Anne was more than just a queen. Her life was filled with elements that heightened her enigma. As we delve further into her captivating life, brace yourself the lesser-known facets of her existence, shrouded in mystery and provoking profound discussions among historians. One of the most disputed secrets is the claim of her having six fingers on one hand. This peculiarity has significantly contributed to her mysterious image. Did Anne indeed indeed possess this unique feature? And if so, what influence did it have on her life and enduring legacy? The alleged sixth finger? What do historical accounts tell shaped our perception of her? Fasten your seatbelts as we dive deeper into the riveting and often debatable world of Anne Boleyn, starting with the enigma of the extra finger. Before we delve into the more specific witchcraft allegations against Anne Boleyn, it's important to set the stage and understand the historical context. In the 16th century, the fear of witches was widespread, a terror deeply embedded in the societal consciousness. Anomalies, physical or otherwise, were viewed with suspicion and often linked to witchcraft, a practice believed to be in league with the devil. Anne Boleyn, with her alleged extra finger, was no stranger to such rumors. Her charm and influence over King Henry VIII, coupled with her inability to produce a male heir, were seen as signs of sorcery and manipulation by many. These beliefs were further fueled by her adversaries, who saw an opportunity to use these rumors as a weapon to undermine her position. But what were these accusations and how did they shape Anne's image? Claims ranged from Anne bewitching the king to win his love, to her causing his impotence and thus preventing the birth of a male heir. These allegations, despite their dubious nature, were powerful enough to cast a shadow over her reign turning her from a queen into a figure of suspicion and fear. As we journey through Anne's life, we'll delve deeper into these allegations, examining their origins, their impact on her life, and how they continue to shape our understanding of this fascinating historical figure. So, let's delve deeper into the eerie world of Anne Boleyn, exploring the witchcraft accusations that marred her reputation and forever altered her legacy. In the shadowy world of the 16th century, where superstition often prevailed over reason, physical anomalies were interpreted as signs of the supernatural. And so we turn our attention to another peculiarity linked to Anne Boleyn, a rumored birthmark. This mark, allegedly on her neck, was further fuel for the fires of suspicion that surrounded her. Some saw it as a devil's mark, a physical manifestation of her supposed dealings with dark forces. Others viewed it as a portent of her tragic destiny, a chilling foreshadowing of the executioner's blade that would eventually claim her life. The speculation about Anne's birthmark was as wild and varied as the rumors about her extra finger. Some believed it to be a sign of her enchanting powers, a tool she used to bewitch the king and secure her place on the throne. Others saw it as a symbol of her guilt, evidence of the witchcraft she was accused of practicing. Regardless of the interpretation, the birthmark became another piece of the puzzle, another part of the myth surrounding Anne Boleyn. In the context of the 16th century, this birthmark speculation served to further isolate Anne, marking her as different as other. It added to the growing sense of fear and mistrust, casting a dark cloud over her reign. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the rumors persisted, shaping Anne's image and contributing to her eventual downfall. As we continue to unravel Anne's story, we'll explore how these rumors and speculations from the extra finger to the birthmark played a significant role in her life and legacy. Anne Boleyn, a woman of many mysteries, was reputed for her witty and clever use of language, not only in spoken word, but also in her written correspondence. She is believed to have used cryptic letters and symbols, a sort of cipher to communicate with her allies and perhaps even her enemies. This intriguing aspect of her life is often overlooked, yet it adds another layer to the complexity of her character. Anne's use of coded messages could have been a survival tactic in the treacherous world of the 16th century court where words could be as deadly as swords. 
It could also be seen as a clever way to maintain a sense of control over her narrative, a subtle form of resistance against the forces that sought to define and constrain her. These cryptic messages may have also played a role in her relationships, adding a layer of intrigue and fascination to her interactions. The potential motivations behind Anne's use of cryptic communication are as varied and complex as the woman herself. Some suggest it was a way for her to express her true feelings without fear of reprisal. Others believe it was a strategic tool, a way to navigate the dangerous political landscape of the time. Regardless of the reasons, this aspect of Anne's life offers a fascinating glimpse into her character and the lengths she went to protect herself and her interests. As we delve further into Anne's story, we'll explore the potential implications of these cryptic communications on her life, her relationships, and ultimately, her downfall. In the labyrinth of historical speculations and theories, one fringe hypothesis stands out for its sheer audacity, the time travel connection to Anne Boleyn. This theory suggests that Anne Boleyn, in an attempt to alter her ill-fated destiny, might have been involved in instances of time travel. This is based on various accounts of unexplained phenomena and sightings of her ghost, suggesting possible temporal anomalies linked to her. While these accounts are largely anecdotal and lack scientific backing, they have sparked intrigue and speculation among history buffs and paranormal enthusiasts. The theory has also inspired several fictional works, adding a fantastical element to Anne's already dramatic life story. In these narratives, Anne is often portrayed as a time traveler, using this ability to navigate the treacherous political landscape of her time or to attempt to change the course of her tragic fate. While historians and scholars largely dismiss this theory as purely speculative and lacking in evidence, it has nonetheless added a layer of intrigue to Anne's story. However, it's important to approach this theory with a healthy dose of skepticism. After all, the laws of physics as we currently understand them do not support the possibility of time travel. Moreover, the idea of Anne Boleyn as a time traveler could be seen as a way to romanticize and sensationalize her story, detracting from the harsh realities of her life and the injustices she faced. Yet this theory, however improbable, reminds us of the enduring fascination with Anne Boleyn, a woman who continues to captivate us centuries after her death. Whether she was a time traveler or not, Anne's story continues to resonate, a testament to her enduring impact on history and popular culture. As we journey deeper into the life of Anne Boleyn, we stumble upon a paradox. She was a woman both adored and despised, a queen celebrated yet condemned. Enveloped in an aura of mystery, her life was dotted with peculiarities that continue to baffle us today. From the speculation about her extra finger, the rumors of her being a witch, to the outlandish theory of her being a time traveler, Anne's existence was anything but ordinary. These bizarre aspects of her life, though largely unproven, have stirred the imagination of countless historians, authors, and enthusiasts. They have painted a portrait of Anne that oscillates between the real and the surreal, the historical and the fantastical. This scene aims to recap these peculiarities, leaving viewers with a sense of intrigue about this enigmatic figure. Let's delve into the Boleyn paradox. As we peel back the layers of Anne Boleyn's life, it becomes increasingly apparent that her story cannot be separated from the tumultuous political climate of her time. In this scene, we delve into the intricate politics of the 16th century, a high-stakes chessboard where Anne was both a player and a pawn. The England of Anne's time was marked by power struggles, religious upheaval and constant shifts in alliances. Anne's rise to power coincided with King Henry VIII's desperation for a male heir and his growing disillusionment with Catherine of Aragon, his first wife. Anne, with her charm and intelligence, was able to exploit this situation to her advantage, securing her place as the queen. However, the political landscape of the time was fraught with danger. Anne's religious views and her support for the Reformation made her a target for conservative factions at court. Her inability to produce a male heir led to her losing the king's favor, further increasing her vulnerability. Rumors and accusations such as those of witchcraft were weapons in the political battles of the time, often used to discredit rivals and consolidate power. Anne's enemies, threatened by her influence and the religious changes she championed, used these rumors to their advantage, painting her as a witch and a seductress. This led to her downfall, showing that in the brutal world of Tudor politics, the line between queen and scapegoat could be alarmingly thin. 
This exploration of the political climate provides a crucial context to Anne's life, helping us understand the forces that shaped her decisions, the challenges she faced, and the factors that contributed to her tragic end. As we move forward, keep this backdrop in mind, for it plays a significant role in the unfolding drama of Anne Boleyn's life. In this scene, we delve into the labyrinth of Anne Boleyn's relationship with King Henry VIII, a tale of passion, power, and ultimately peril. Anne's involvement with the king was not merely a romantic affair. It was a strategic move on the grand chessboard of Tudor politics. Anne, with her vivacious personality and keen intellect, enchanted the king, who was desperate for a male heir and increasingly disenchanted with his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Their courtship was a drawn-out affair, marked by intense passion and power play. Anne, aware of the king's desperation, withheld her affections until the king proposed marriage, a move that would forever alter the course of English history. Their union, however, was not without its challenges. As queen, Anne was expected to produce a male heir. Her failure to do so, coupled with her vocal support for religious reform, made her a target among conservative factions at court. While Anne's relationship with the king granted her unprecedented power, it also made her vulnerable to the volatile politics of the time. Her bond with the king, once her greatest asset, became her biggest liability as her enemies exploited the king's disappointment and growing paranoia. As we move to the next scene, we shall explore how these political tensions culminated in the witchcraft allegations that would lead to Anne's downfall. Remember, in the world of Tudor politics, love and power were deeply intertwined and every move could be a matter of life and death. In this scene, we delve into the circumstances leading to Anne Boleyn's downfall, a series of unfortunate events that triggered a domino effect, culminating in her trial and execution. As a queen who failed to deliver a male heir and a woman with a strong voice in a male-dominated court, Anne had made several enemies within the conservative factions of the court. Her open support for religious reform and her clashes with influential figures only served to fan the flames of their animosity. The turning point came in 1536 with Anne's last miscarriage. With no son to secure her position and the king's affections waning, Anne's situation became perilous. The conservative faction at court, led by Thomas Cromwell, took advantage of the king's disappointment and paranoia. They started weaving a web of accusations against Anne, painting her as a treacherous adulteress and a witch, using her alleged extra finger as evidence of her supposed pact with the devil. Meanwhile, the king's attention had already shifted to Jane Seymour, a lady-in-waiting at court who was everything Anne was not quiet, submissive, and conservative. The stage was set for Anne's downfall. An investigation into her conduct was launched, and several men, including her own brother, were arrested on charges of adultery. Anne was arrested and taken to the Tower of London, where she awaited her trial for adultery, incest, and high treason. The trial was a farce, with the outcome predetermined. Anne was found guilty and sentenced to death. As we transition to the next scene, we will explore the witchcraft accusations in detail, revealing how they were instrumental in the orchestration of Anne's downfall. Remember, in the tumultuous world of Tudor politics, alliances were fragile, power was fleeting, and the line between life and death was perilously thin. In this scene, we explore the lasting impact of Anne Boleyn on Tudor England. Despite her tragic end, Anne's influence was profound and far-reaching affecting politics, religion, and societal norms of the time. Known for her intelligence, strong will, and charisma, Anne was a significant player in the political arena. Her marriage to King Henry VIII marked a seismic shift in England's political landscape, triggering the break with the Catholic Church and the establishment of the Church of England. This religious revolution had a lasting impact, altering the course of English history forever. Beyond politics and religion, Anne also left a distinct mark on societal norms. Her assertive nature and independent thinking challenged the traditional roles of women in a male-dominated society. Despite the backlash she faced, her courage and determination paved the way for future queens to exercise more influence and power. Moreover, Anne's influence extended to the arts and culture. Known for her refined taste, she fostered the advancement of Renaissance culture in England. 
Her patronage of the arts and literature played a pivotal role in the development of the English Renaissance, leaving a lasting cultural legacy that still resonates today. However, Anne's impact was not without controversy. Her downfall and the allegations of witchcraft that led to her execution created a climate of fear and suspicion that lingered for years. This period of intense political and religious upheaval left a lasting imprint on Tudor England, shaping its history in ways that still echo to this day. As we transition to the next scene, we will delve deeper into the witchcraft accusations that played a crucial role in Anne's downfall, casting a shadow over her legacy. As we transition from the impact of Anne Boleyn on Tudor England, and before we delve into the witchcraft accusations, let's pause and consider her historical legacy, Anne Boleyn. Once vilified and executed on charges of witchcraft, treason and adultery, has undergone a significant transformation in the eyes of history. Today she is often portrayed as a feminist icon, a symbol of courage and persistence in the face of adversity. Historical records initially painted Anne as a villainous figure, a homewrecker and a witch who ensnared King Henry VIII with her charms. However, over the centuries, a more nuanced picture has emerged. Scholars have come to recognize Anne's intelligence, her political acumen, and her role in England's break with the Catholic Church. In literature, Anne's character has been portrayed with varying degrees of sympathy and intrigue. From the scheming seductress in older works to the intelligent, ambitious woman in more recent novels, the evolution of her representation reflects the changing societal attitudes towards powerful women. In popular culture, Anne Boleyn continues to fascinate. Her life has been dramatized in numerous films, TV series and stage productions, often highlighting her strength and resilience. These portrayals have helped to humanize Anne, revealing a woman who was far more complex and influential than the villainous caricature painted by her enemies. Despite the harsh accusations and tragic end, Anne Boleyn's legacy has proven to be enduring and transformative. Her life and death have left an indelible impact on English history and continue to captivate the imagination of people worldwide. Now let's delve into the witchcraft accusations that played a significant role in shaping this legacy. As we navigate the intricate timeline of Anne Boleyn's life and legacy, it's important to acknowledge that there are numerous controversies and inconsistencies in historical accounts about her. Historians have often clashed over the interpretation of events and the motivations behind her actions. Some claim Anne was a power-hungry seductress who manipulated the king for her own gains while others argue that she was a victim of the political machinations of her time. The truth, as always, likely lies somewhere in between. For instance, the claim of Anne having an extra finger, which played a crucial role in her witchcraft accusations, is still a subject of debate among historians. Some argue that this was a malicious rumor spread by her enemies to tarnish her image, while others believe it to be a fact, pointing to various historical documents as proof. The controversy extends to her role in England's break with the Catholic Church. Some historians credit Anne with being a significant catalyst, while others argue that the split was primarily driven by King Henry VIII's desperation for a male heir. Amidst these differing viewpoints, what remains undisputed is Anne's influence and the indelible mark she left on English history. Her life, filled with high drama and political intrigue, continues to captivate historians and the general public alike. As we delve further into her story, let's keep these controversies in mind, understanding that history is often a matter of interpretation, shaped by the biases and perspectives of those who write it. In the midst of these swirling controversies and accusations, let's shift our focus to the Boleyn household, a significant but oft overlooked aspect of Anne's life. This scene explores the dynamics of Anne's relationships within her family, particularly with her daughter, Elizabeth I. Anne who was known for her sharp intellect and ambitious nature, had a complex relationship with her family. Her father, Sir Thomas Boleyn, recognized Anne's potential early on and played a significant role in shaping her future. He ensured that Anne received an excellent education, a move that set her apart from other women of her time and prepared her for the challenges that lay ahead. However, the relationship was far from perfect with Sir Thomas often exploiting Anne's position for his own political gains. The bond between Anne and her daughter Elizabeth was tragically short-lived. Anne was executed when Elizabeth was just two years old, 
However, Anne's influence on Elizabeth was profound and lasting. Elizabeth inherited her mother's intelligence, charisma and strength of character. Despite the damaging rumours and accusations that surrounded her mother, Elizabeth never let these affect her love and respect for Anne. She often expressed admiration for her mother's courage and determination, and these sentiments played a significant role in shaping Elizabeth's own reign. In understanding these family dynamics, we gain a more nuanced perspective on Anne Boleyn. Her relationships within her family, particularly with her daughter, not only shaped her life, but also had a significant impact on the course of English history. As we unravel the layers of Anne's life, it's essential to remember that she was not just a queen or a figure of controversy. She was also a daughter, a sister, and a mother, roles that deeply influenced her actions and decisions. Let's delve into the artistic and literary depictions of Anne Boleyn. These representations, often influenced by the controversies and rumors surrounding her, have significantly shaped the public perception of Anne. In literature, Anne is often portrayed as a cunning and ambitious woman who would stop at nothing to achieve her goals. This portrayal is largely based on the rumors that Anne used witchcraft to ensnare King Henry VIII. However, these depictions fail to consider Anne's intellect, resilience, and the challenges she faced as a woman in a male-dominated society. In visual arts, Anne is frequently depicted with an extra finger, a nod to the witchcraft accusations that played a significant role in her downfall. These depictions, despite their lack of historical accuracy, have perpetuated the image of Anne as a witch, further tarnishing her reputation. On the other hand, there have been attempts to portray Anne in a more positive light, focusing on her role as a mother and her influence on Elizabeth I. These depictions highlight Anne's strength and resilience, offering a more nuanced perspective on her life. Whether it's through literature, paintings or films, the portrayal of Anne Boleyn has evolved over time, reflecting changing societal attitudes and interpretations of her life. As we explore these artistic representations, we are reminded of the power of art and literature in shaping historical narratives and public perception. In the 16th century, allegations of witchcraft were considered severe charges, often leading to cruel torture and public execution. The common belief belief was that those who bore physical anomalies, referred to as devil's marks, were elements of a nefarious with the devil. Now, let's focus on Anne Boleyn's case. There were rumors about Anne possessing an extra digit, an anomaly that played a central role in her witchcraft allegations. Anne was suspected of utilizing witchcraft to charm King Henry VIII into marrying her and causing his impotence, thus preventing him from producing a male heir. These destructive accusations were primarily fueled by her political adversaries, aiming to discredit her and tarnish her reputation. The charges soon became widespread following Anne's miscarriages and stillbirths, which were as evidence of her supposed witchcraft. These witchcraft allegations dramatically altered Anne's image, metamorphosing her from a queen, a figure enveloped in terror and suspicion, casting a ghostly shadow over her reign. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, these charges played a critical role in her downfall. Anne's portrayal as a witch, a seductress who used dark magic to enchant the king, persists in popular culture today, adding a fresh layer to her already complex tale. The stories about her alleged extra finger remain a stark reminder of the potency of gossips and suspicion in directing her life and legacy. Let's delve into a specific aspect of Anne Boleyn's life that is less well-known yet highly controversial, the prominent birthmark on her neck and the whispers of, of witchcraft surrounding it. Anne's birthmark was feature. In the era she lived, the 16th century, physical abnormalities often attracted superstition and were viewed as of witchcraft or demonic involvement. When combined with another alleged feature of hers, an extra finger, the birthmark only made the rumors of witchcraft against her grow stronger. Various theories about Anne's birthmark have been proposed, some that it wasn't a birthmark at all, but rather a goiter, a swelling of the thyroid gland usually caused by a lack of iodine, which was plausible considering the prevalent iodine-deficient diets of the period. However, some put forth that the birthmark was a mere invention, a strategic component of an underground campaign to Anne's reputation. Whether it was real or imagined, the speculation about the birthmark played a crucial role in defining Anne's image and shaping her fate. It gave her detractors another reason to label her as different and supplied ammunition for the cruel charges levied against her. 
In the pages of Anne's life, these physical peculiarities, whether actual or fabricated, were not mere oddities. They, they were powerful symbols, loaded with meaning and used as deadly weapons in the cutthroat world of Tudor politics. As we delve deeper into the mysterious life of Anne Boleyn, this time our focus shifts towards her use of cryptic symbols and secret letters in her personal correspondences. Anne Boleyn was known to communicate through a labyrinth of covert symbols and disguised letters. This secretive form of communication was a source of much speculation and intrigue. During the, the time, such concealed communication was often viewed a distinct sense of mystique, and in Anne's case, it served to amplify her already enigmatic persona. Some believed that her cryptic correspondences were used to exercise a mysterious control, almost akin to witchcraft, explaining her rise to queenhood. Others viewed it as a sign of her exceptional intellect, unique character, indicative of her ability to manipulate and assert her influence. Yet others speculated that these secret symbols and letters were merely a reflection of her desire for privacy and a tool to mask her true intentions. However, whether viewed as a tool of control, intellectual prowess or privacy, Anne's covert forms of communication added another layer of intrigue to her. It also had significant implications for her relationships and standing. Some were fascinated by her cryptic letters, seeing them as a testament to her cunning and allure. Others, however, viewed it as of her sinister nature and deception. Just like her enigmatic birthmark, her secret correspondences were used both as a way to elevate her and as a means to condemn her. The deeper we venture into Anne's life, the clearer it is that she was a woman of complex character and intrigue. She was a woman of many layers, both controversial and captivating. Let's wander away from the well-trodden path of conventional narratives and explore an offbeat hypothesis about Anne Boleyn's story. Her rumored engagement with cryptic letters and symbols. An outlying group of ardent admirers, admirers, motivated by Anne's fascination with alchemy and her mysterious communication, put forth an audacious theory that her cryptic letters and symbols could signify that she was a time traveler. They conjecture that Anne, armed with her understanding of alchemy, might have used these mystifying to relay her experiences and ideas from different time periods. This, to them, could explain her progressive ideologies, her unconventional fashion statements, and her mesmerizing aura. But how has this fringe theory been greeted in scholarly circles? As expected, the majority of historians brush it aside as pure speculation, utterly lacking in historical evidence. They, they argue that Anne's uniqueness is more likely the result of her intelligence, enlightened thinking, and exposure to varied cultures, and not some fantastical time travel narrative. Despite its marginal acceptance, this time travel theory continues to invoke the curiosity of many, adding an additional dimension of intrigue to the enigma that is Anne Boleyn. Whether you endorse this theory or not, the fascination who might have used cryptic letters and symbols as a time traveler is undeniably enthralling. After all, who wouldn't be entranced by a woman who was not just ahead of her time, but possibly a traveler through time itself? Before we proceed further into unraveling Anne's talents and interests, let's take a brief pause and recap the most unusual aspects of her life that have been a matter of intrigue. There's this peculiar theory that Anne Boleyn might not just have been any ordinary historical figure, but a time traveler. We have critically dissected her physical oddities, like her extra finger, and an inherent birthmark that has been the subject of numerous stories. We have scrutinized the allegations of witchcraft that blighted and the enigmatic way she communicated, leaving historians puzzled down the ages. And then the most audacious of all claims, the theory of her being a time traveler. This hypothesis has been met with a mixed response in the historical circles, with some discarding it outright, while others being captivated by the boldness boldness of its implications. Isn't it odd that we seem to be dissecting a character from a fantasy novel rather than a real historical figure? Yet, these extraordinary aspects of Anne's life have been chronicled by numerous sources adding an aura of mystique and complexity to her persona. As we delve deeper, keep in mind this bold interplay of reality and speculation that entwines Anne's life. Up next, we'll be discussing her talents and interests are just as captivating. Stay with us as we continue to untangle the riddle that is Anne Boleyn.
journey back in time and delve into the peculiarities and mysteries of Anne Boleyn's life. The Tudor era, a period marked by political unrest and religious religious upheaval, serves as the canvas for Anne's compelling story. Her navigation through this labyrinth of political chess speaks to her acumen and unwavering spirit. Anne's tale was far from mundane, it bore the marks of scandal, was cloaked in enigma, and was heavily shaped by the political upheaval of her time. As King Henry VIII's second wife, Anne found herself at the crux of the English Reformation, a remarkable period of religious shift and political revolution. Henry's vehement desire to annul his marriage with Catherine of Aragon induced a significant change. England's detachment from the Roman Catholic Church and the creation of the Church of England with steering the ship. At the epicenter of this unprecedented shift was Anne, the woman for whom Henry was willing to face excommunication and wage war. Anne's significant influence on Henry during these volatile times is well documented. Anne, well documented. Anne was known for her zealous advocacy for religious reform and is thought to have been a key figure in promoting Henry's split from the church. She introduced Henry to several groundbreaking texts, including William Tyndale's The Obedience of a Christian Man. Anne was not a mere spectator of these political shifts. She was an active participant, wielding considerable influence. Nonetheless, her pivotal role and religious attracted opposition. Anne's influence over the king and her involvement in the English Reformation led to her being vilified as a heretic and a witch. Anne's life was woven into the political tapestry of her era, highlighting how politics can shape personal destinies in the most unforeseen ways. As we explore further into Anne's fascinating story, Bear in mind her story transcends personal boundaries and intertwines deeply with the politics of her time, leaving us intrigued by this relatively lesser-known yet formidable historical figure. Journeying from the corridors of political power to the intricate maze of personal lives, we delve into the details of Anne's connection with Henry VIII, a relationship that didn't just alter their destinies but sparked a revolution in the course of an entire nation. The courtship of Anne by Henry was far from a simple affair. Legend tells us that Anne initially shrugged off his advances, attempting to sidestep the fate that befell her sister Mary, who was once the king's mistress. This refusal only stoked the fire of Henry's desire, propelling him into an pursuit of Anne that stretched across several years. Their love story resembled a strategically played chess game. Every move was deliberate, every choice ricocheted with potential outcomes of power or destruction. Once they exchanged vows, Anne's sway over Henry was unarguable. She emerged as a key figure in England, severing ties with the Roman Catholic Church, which resulted in the creation of the Church of England. She was more than his spouse, she was his, his trusted companion and on occasion his accomplice in intricate political schemes. However, as the old adage states, the loftier the rise, the steeper the fall. Anne's inability to birth a male successor made her court standing increasingly unstable. Henry's attention started to drift and Anne's detractors seized this as an opportunity. The fiery romance gradually morphed into a perilous struggle for power, culminating in Anne's downfall. Their relationship was not merely a regal love story. It was the fuse that ignited drastic changes in England's political and religious topography. As we explore Anne's abilities and passions, it is crucial to acknowledge that these aspects of her life were intrinsically shaped by her bond with Henry, a bond that was as multifaceted and contentious as Anne herself. From a position of immense power and influence, we delve into the unfortunate conclusion of Anne Boleyn's journey. Unable to bear a male heir, Anne's standing at court grew increasingly unstable. Her charisma and cleverness, once attracting King Henry VIII, were now perceived as threats. Whispers started circulating, providing her adversaries the chance they needed to make their move. In April 1536, Anne found herself arrested and transported to the Tower of London. She stood accused of adultery, incest, and conspiring to assassinate the king, charges which most historians now agree were completely unfounded. The trial was nothing more than a mockery, it's predetermined. Even though she put up a spirited defense, Anne was declared guilty. Facing grave accusations, Anne's bravery remained undiminished. She adhered to her claim of innocence till her last breath, her final embodying her steadfastness and dignity. Good Christian people, I am come hither to die, for according to the law, 
and by the law I am judged to die, and therefore I will speak nothing against it. Her life, filled with conspiracy, power, dispute, met a tragic end on May 19, 1536 with her execution. However, Anne's tragic ending was just a part of her extraordinary life. With her indomitable spirit and final words echoing resilience, Anne Boleyn led a life marked by controversy and power struggles, but her influence extended beyond her execution. Her mark on Tudor England is still palpable today. Our journey starts with politics. The union of Anne with Henry VIII caused a powerful tremor in England's political arena. Anne's persuasive hold over the king was instrumental in the English Reformation, resulting in the split from Rome and the inception of the Church of England. This transformative moment in English history resulted in a dramatic shift in the nation's religious, political and social landscape. As we delve into religion, we find Anne as a pivotal player in the rise of Protestantism in England. She fervently supported this new religious wave and leveraged her position to propagate Protestant ideologies. Some scholars even propose that she might have had a hand in the translation and release of the English Bible, a groundbreaking accomplishment that made Holy Scriptures readily available to ordinary people for the first time. Anne's was not confined to politics and religion, she played a key role in challenging societal norms. Anne had the audacity to question the traditional roles of women in Tudor society. Queen, who never hesitated to voice her opinions, she was a woman who dared to assert her identity in a world ruled by men. Her audacity, intellect and charm set a novel precedent for the role of women in the royal court. Though Anne Boleyn's life was ended prematurely, her legacy persisted. Her influence navigated the path of English history in ways that continue to echo today. As we explore her talents and passions going forward, bear in mind that Anne was more than just a, she was a woman of significance, a catalyst for change, a pioneer, and a formidable force. We begin our journey with Anne Boleyn's portrayal in historical records. Following Anne's execution, she was widely vilified, painted as a scheming temptress who employed witchcraft to bewitch the king. These depictions fueled by political agendas of the time providing a rather simplistic and distorted image of Anne that was a far cry from reality. Fast forward a few centuries and historians began to dissect Anne's legacy anew. They started identifying her as a significant character in the English Reformation, a driving force behind the foundation of the Church of England. This recognition marked a considerable shift from her initial vilification. This evolution of Anne's legacy doesn't stop at historical records. Her portrayal in literature and popular culture witnessed an even more profound transformation. Throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries, Anne was often depicted as a tragic heroine, trapped under the thumb of a despotic king. However, in recent years, the narrative has undergone a change. Anne is now seen as a woman who possessed agency, a queen who had the courage to defy the conventions of her era. This reinterpretation has turned Anne into a beacon of female empowerment and resistance. The contemporary novels, films, and TV series bear witness this change, reflecting Anne as a multifaceted and intriguing character. Thus, Anne Boleyn's legacy is a tale of constant evolution, mirroring the shifting societal perceptions of women and power. Often, the lens of history provides a multitude of perspectives, especially when we consider the figure of Anne Let's explore the disputes and dissimilarities in historical records revolving around this compelling queen. The first point of contention is the year of Anne's birth. Historians have made arguments for two possibilities, 1501 and 1507. Although seemingly insignificant, this six-year divergence holds great importance in comprehending the early years of Anne's life and the formation of her character. We then move to the question of her appearance. The descriptions of Anne's looks have long been a topic of debate. Was she a striking beauty with raven hair and captivating dark eyes, or was she an average-looking woman who charmed the king with her wit and intelligence? The historical narratives differ. Contemporary chroniclers often painted her as less beautiful than her sister Mary, yet there was an undeniable allure about her. The most hotly debated issue, however, has always been her personality. Was Anne truly the scheming temptress as depicted in Tudor propaganda, or was she a pawn, ensnared in a political game played by ambitious men? Views differ among historians. 
Some suggest that Anne was merely a tool in the hands of her power-hungry family and courtiers who used her for their political gains. On the other hand, some maintain that Anne was a woman of agency who skillfully used her power and influence to her goals. As we examine the multiple accounts, it becomes apparent that the real Anne Boleyn remains elusive. This enigmatic queen was a mass of contradictions, feared and loved, reviled, respected. The disputes that surround her life add depth to her character, making her one of the most engrossing personalities in history. As we move to discussing her talents and interests in the following scene, bear in mind that each facet of Anne's life forms a part of an intricate puzzle that continues to intrigue historians and enthusiasts alike. Peeking behind the grand spectacle of the court and the intricate web of power, we find Anne Boleyn, a woman whose life was significantly molded by her familial connections. Let's delve into the myriad of these family dynamics, starting with her relationship with the apple of her eye, her daughter, the future Queen Elizabeth I. Despite the tumultuous events marking Elizabeth's birth, Anne was a mother whose love knew no bounds. She cherished the short-lived moments with her daughter, and historians have often been led to believe that her influence played a significant role in transforming Elizabeth into the formidable, sharp Anne Queen she later became. Anne's life was cut short when Elizabeth was just two, Yet, the reverberations of her mother's legacy never faded. The qualities that punctuated Elizabeth's reign, resilience, wit, and fearlessness, were the very same that her mother embodied. Turning our to the relationships within Anne's own family, the Boleyns were a family of considerable ambition, and it is frequently proposed that they strategically utilized Anne to advance their standing at court. Thomas Boleyn, her father, her uncle, the Duke of Norfolk, were the key players in arranging her marriage to Henry VIII. Though less is known about Anne's relationship with her siblings, Mary and George, there is a consensus that she shared a strong bond with George, who tragically faced execution for treason charges. The complex dynamics within the Boleyn's family are a testament to the intertwining threads of ambition, power and the drive for survival at the Tudor court. As we move on to the next topic, we will uncover Anne's talents and interests that brought vibrancy to court life and added dimension to her multifaceted personality. The legacy of Anne Boleyn has been etched not only in the annals of history, but also in a plethora of artistic portrayals. Through the ages, artists, authors and directors have seen Anne's life through different lenses, and have presented her in an array of interpretations. These creative depictions have significantly influenced how the world perceives Anne. Let us delve into this intriguing facet. Begin with portraiture. No acknowledged contemporary portraits of Anne exist. However, a late 16th century piece residing in London's National Portrait Gallery is widely regarded as her image. This portrait represents Anne as an epitome of grace and elegance, with her distinct bee necklace clearly visible. Yet, this image of Anne is markedly different from the descriptions offered by those who knew her. This inconsistency between historical descriptions and artistic portrayals underscores the enigma and intricacy that envelops Anne's persona. Shifting our focus to literature, Anne has been depicted in a broad spectrum of fictional works. From compassionate portrayals in books like The Other Boleyn Girl to more contentious depictions in Wolf Hall, these literary interpretations have continually redefined our perception of Anne. These accounts have added a human element to her, underlining her ambitions, anxieties and frailties, transforming her into a figure of empathy and intrigue. Finally, we turn to the realm of film and television. From Anne of the Thousand Days to The Tudors and the recent The Spanish Princess, these productions have breathed life into Anne's story. These visual narratives have not only made Anne's story more popular, but also provided more nuanced interpretations of her character, thus making her a figure of fascination and conjecture. Through these artistic portrayals, Anne Boleyn transcends the boundaries of history, evolving into a symbol of mystery, power and resilience. Stay tuned as we delve into Anne's talents and interests in the following scene, illuminating her multifaceted persona. Anne was not just an enigmatic figure due to her physical traits, she was a woman of substance and intrigue with a myriad of talents and interests. First, let's delve into her fascination with alchemy. In an era of the Renaissance when alchemy was seen as a magical blend of science, philosophy and spiritual mysticism, Anne found herself engrossed with the idea of transmuting rudimentary metals into gold, symbolizing spiritual transformation. 
Her interest in this esoteric practice reflected her intellectual curiosity and added an air of mystery and fascination to her persona. Next, we move on to her musical prowess. Anne wasn't just any ordinary royal, she was an accomplished musician. She mastered the art of playing the lute, an instrument much loved in Tudor England, and was blessed with a beautiful singing voice. Her musical talents would have been highly sought after in courtly life, making her an invaluable asset to the cultural landscape of the court. Picture her in a dimly lit room playing the lute, her soulful voice echoing melodiously, leaving everyone spellbound. And then there was her approach to fashion, which was nothing less than revolutionary. Anne parted ways with the traditional heavy and confining English gowns of her era, preferring the more stylish French fashion. Her attire, made from rich, intricately embroidered fabrics, was cut to highlight her slim figure. She also brought the French hood into vogue, a fashionable deviation from the traditional English gable hood. This trailblazing approach to fashion crowned her as a style icon of her era. Finally, her fashion sense wasn't restricted to her clothing alone. It extended to her jewelry, especially the controversial B necklace, with B representing Berlin. It was a defining statement of her individuality, a bold move at a time when women were expected to adopt their husband's identity. In essence, Anne was far more than just a queen. She was a woman of substance, style and intrigue. Her interests in alchemy, music and fashion, coupled with her assertiveness in asserting her individuality, portrayed a woman who was far more nuanced and captivating than what traditional historical narratives often portray. Anne Boleyn, a figure of historical significance, was born into a distinguished family of high standing. Her father, Thomas Boleyn, was a respected diplomat and her mother, Lady Elizabeth Howard, was from one of the most powerful families in England. These familial ties undoubtedly had a significant part in Anne's ascent to power, but her impact extended beyond her inherited connections. Anne Boleyn wasn't just a woman of noble birth, she was a woman of remarkable intellect and a lover of the arts, especially literature. Her deep-seated passion for literature was not confined to her personal interests. As queen, she wielded her influence to patronize literature, endorsing writers and works that were in line with her religious and political perspectives. In this role, she actively supported the English Reformation and propelled Protestant ideas through her patronage of influential writers like William Tyndale. Tyndale's work, The Obedience of a Christian Man, a book that advocated the king's supremacy over the church, was reportedly a favorite of Anne's. It's believed that this book had a profound influence on her husband, Henry VIII, and his decision to crucially break away from the Catholic Church. But Anne's contribution to literature was not limited to her role as a patron. She was an author herself. Though only a handful of her letters survive today, they provide insights into her exceptional intellect and persuasive power. Her eloquence and emotional intelligence are evident in a letter to Henry VIII penned while she was imprisoned in the Tower of London. In addition to this, she also sponsored the Great Bible, the first authorized English translation of the Bible. This act was not just a remarkable achievement, but also a bold statement in favor of religious reform and literacy. Anne Boleyn's significant impact on literature serves as a testament to her enduring influence on English history. Her strategic patronage of literature and arts, her family connections, and her own literary contributions played a pivotal role in shaping the course of history. Anne Boleyn, a woman of refined taste and a keen advocate for equality. Her palate was not ordinary by any means. With a predilection for regal dishes, her choices in meals reflected her status as queen and her lifestyle at court. Anne had a certain fondness for French cuisine, a taste she cultivated during her stay at the French court. Her palate savored pastries, sweetmeats, and elaborate game dishes, all considered the pinnacle of luxury and sophistication during the Tudor period. But Anne's refined tastes were not confined to her dining table. They extended to the realm of education as well. Anne was not merely a queen who appreciated high-quality dishes, was a queen who recognized the value of education, particularly for women. In the 16th century, when women's education was often overlooked, she became a torchbearer for change. Well-versed in languages, music and literature, she used her influence to advocate for women's right to education. She played a pivotal role in shaping her daughter Elizabeth's education, 
who eventually grew to be one of England's most educated and influential monarchs. However, Anne's advocacy wasn't just family-oriented. She also reached out to the wider community of women, championing their educational rights. Anne sponsored scholarships for young girls and promoted the study of arts and sciences among women. During an era when women were relegated to domestic roles, Anne's groundbreaking efforts to elevate women's status through education made a significant impact. Despite life's controversies and her premature death, there's no denying her enduring influence on women's education. A queen who defied societal norms and believed in equal opportunities for women to learn and prosper, Anne's advocacy for women's education speaks volumes of her progressive nature. Even amidst adversity, she persisted in her championing of women's rights, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to inspire even today. Anne's final moments were a testament to her strength and dignity, even amid the controversy that marked her life. As the day dawned on May 19, 1536, England's Queen, Anne Boleyn, readied herself to face her destiny. Atmosphere was fraught with tension, yet Anne displayed a serene courage, silencing onlookers in awe. In an era where public executions were a spectacle, Anne's final address was neither a desperate cry for mercy nor a venomous curse upon her adversaries. Her oration, filled with eloquence and bravery, was a reflection of her robust character. Anne espoused, Good Christian people, I am come hither to die. For according to the law and by the law I am judged to die, and therefore I will speak nothing against it. Her words were carefully chosen, aimed not to implicate the king, her husband, Henry VIII. She further proclaimed, I pray God save the king and send him long to reign over you, for a gentler nor a more merciful prince was there never. Her dialogue, filled with grace, acceptance of her fate and dignity, was humbling yet eerie. Reflecting on Anne's legacy, it's that she was a queen not just by title, but by character. Her influence steered the trajectory of English history, laying the foundation for the English Reformation. She left indelible footprints on the English court with her interest in alchemy, her patronage of the arts, and her trendsetter fashion sense. However, her most impactful legacy manifested in her daughter Elizabeth, who grew to be one of the most influential monarchs in English history. Anne Boleyn's final moments summed up her queenly essence. She confronted death with the grace of a queen and the valor of a lioness. Despite her life being embroiled in her legacy stands as a pillar of strength, resilience, and an indomitable spirit still resonates and continues to inspire us.